for the national team of Europe. Number four, numéro 4, Abdurazi Jalalay. Number 5, numéro 5, Hassan Abdi. Number 6, numéro 6, Ali Reza Ahmed. Numéro 7, number 7, Baïd Koulamata. Number 10, numéro 10, Mohamed Mohamed Reza. Number 11, numéro 11, Akim Ansoumi. Number 5, numéro 13, Madi Abbas. Number 14, numéro 14, Abdoulaye Garaki. Number 15, numéro 15, Iman Bachada Fard. National Anthem of the Netherlands, l'hymne national des Pays-Bas.
national anthems of these two beautiful countries of both Iran and the Netherlands have been sung. And now coaches and players will shake hands and pay each other homage as we are now moments away from this exciting matchup. Remember, it's a repeat matchup of the bronze medal game of the IWBF World Championship in Dubai. Well, there's your lineup for head coach Kai Sven Husala of the Netherlands. For key players you want to look out for is Mendel Optinert, Robin Hogenbisch, and not to mention the man who's the defensive nightmare for any team here in the international world of wheelchair basketball, Matthijs Bellas. Well, a very good performance in the previous victory as Quinton Zatanga had 17 points in their opening game here at the Repercharge. He's a primetime player. And the Netherlands now will be looking to get a victory against a team that took the bronze medal away from them in Dubai this summer. Well, the Iranians, of course, had a very interesting start to the rapid charge. They played against the host, France, yesterday in what was a very exciting matchup. And they had a half-court shot that could have won them the game, but they did end up losing. And they will be looking to bounce back, but the test doesn't get any tougher than when you're up against the Netherlands. Well, again, this team features some very exciting talents. I mean, you got to look at the likes of Morteza, Betty, the veteran player, and of course, Sayadi. Sayadi making the journey where he's currently playing in Turkey, where last season he was playing for Fenerbahce, but has now crossed the town to play for their rivals, Galatasaray. Mari Abassi as well. So head coach Dacia will be looking for a big response from his players. Well, we'd like to give some shout outs to the fans watching live. So a big shout out to Boris Krenitz, the MVP, the man who's a super fan watching international wheelchair basketball and able body basketball all over the world. And a big shout out to Sinclair Thomas and Monaco car spotting Toski. Remember, if you are watching this live YouTube stream, please hit that like button, subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube, and make sure you follow the IWBF on all social media platforms of X, Instagram, and Facebook. The slogan for the Repercharge: charge, it is the last chance for Paris. Use that hashtag in all social media posts as four teams will be joining the USA, Great Britain, Spain, and Australia for the 2024 Paralympics in Paris. Kais Van Roosela, head coach of the Netherlands, getting one final talk in now with his players. Because there is the man to look out for, Mendel op den Ert, 34 points yesterday in their opening victory. I mean, he is a primetime player when they defeated the Canadian national team. But Iran, this team plays with a lot of heart. And these two teams, as I already said, they met at the IWBF World Championship this past summer. But it was the Iranians who surprised the world and took home the bronze medal. Well, if you are currently watching this game live in the YouTube stream, please let us know which team you're supporting and, you know, who do you think will win? Boris Krenitz, MVP, I want to know, brother. Who do you think will win? Will it be Iran or will it indeed be the Netherlands? Well, as the great Jeff Taylor would say, the voice of FIBA, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome here on Team France. We're going to get this one underway, and it's an early turnover for the Netherlands. Well, already, they're going to their game plan, and that game plan is Mendel op den Netherlands getting off to a very, very good start. Well, now the Netherlands trying to get things going. Mendel up den Ert. Top of the key here. Too sure, but Matthias Bell is coming up with the rebound. Just trying to orchestrate something. Sideline possession here to the men in orange. Well, today they're actually playing in their home colors of white. 
Bellas going handoff with Pogginvich. Good passing here from the Dutch. Pogginvich goes to the mid range. Can't get it, but Bellas getting the offensive rebound, and the putback is good. First two points for the Mighty Dutch. Well, it's always an exciting counter when these two teams play against each other. Mental Lofton did have 24 points in that bronze medal game, but of course, Abedi did lead the Iranians with 19 when they won the bronze medal in Dubai. Abdel Erd getting stopped in his tracks here by uh, Morteza. Finding Pogginvich. Bellas inside the key. Get him rejected. Good defense. Well, that's going to go out of bounds. And that's going to go to the Iranians. Well, solid defense. Well, Iran does take a lot of pride in how they did defend at the IWBF World Championship in Dubai. And today, of course, that is going to be the key factor trying to contain because you're not going to stop a player like Matthijs Bellas, Mandelop, and Ertz. You have to try to make life difficult for them as much as possible. Most of no look pass down low. It's a wide open look, but they're unable to convert. Pog and Vish, Bonnie Mandelop, and Ertz. Going from ATP, puts it up and tucks it away beautifully. Remember, 34 points yesterday against Team Canada. And already getting things going. Netherlands taking the lead. Sayari finding Morteza going baseline. Trying to break down the Dutch defense inside the paint is going to be a challenge for the Iranians. But they've done it once. And who's to say they can't do it again? Inside the paint, the foul has been called, so Mohammed will go to the free throw line for two shots. That's one thing you got to love about the Iranian offense. Patience, good spacing, good passing. But now they have to go to the free throw line and knock down these two. Well, Mohammed making the first free throw. Makes them both. Well, again, the free throw line could as well be a big decider in this game because you know how these two teams like to play. More than likely, we'll see a lot of journeys to the charity stripe. Inside the key, Bellas has two points already. Dion with the offensive rebound. The putback is good. That's another thing Iran's going to have to try to battle with here tonight, keeping the Netherlands off second chance points. Sayadi from 15, puts up the floater, and again, nice little mid-range. Well, again, they struggled in their opening game, and it was in front of a very passionate French crowd here in Antibes at the Azur Arena. Maybe just settling the dust. If you are a neutral, you definitely want to see this game go right down to the wire. Well, nice passing here from the Netherlands. De Jong wide open, and no problem for Frank De Jong. We'll go back to that game in the bronze medal matchup between these two teams in Dubai. Iran controlled the tempo. They frustrated the Dutch defense. Made life difficult for them on offense as well. The turnover is going to be called against the Iranians. Sayadi just stepping, well, moving out of bounds. Possession back to the Netherlands. Hoganvish left with a lot of time and space. Finding Bellas. Patient passing here from the Netherlands. Bellas with the long arms, able to catch this one, and he draws a foul. So now he will go to the charity stripe. Now, interestingly, he spoke with head coach Kais van Husela. Bellas didn't play in the second half of yesterday's game, in which they did defeat the Canadians which in fact was a good chance for Kenton Zatanga, who did have 17 points. If you think the main two go-to scoring options for 
the Dutch are indeed Matthijs Bellers, but also the main option would be Mendel Upton Ertz. Bellas with a high release, beautiful rotation, makes both free throws. Four point lead for the Netherlands. The Iranians currently with only two players on the score sheet. Mahdi now going inside the key, puts this one up, and both teams exchanging field goals at the moment. And you like the tempo of this game. Back and forth between two very good teams. Hoggenvich trying to push the tempo. Good recovery defense by Iran. Now they go to Bellas. Bellas bumps, contact, no foul, colds. But I like that continuation. Bringing a little bit of physicality to this game. Sets a very good precedent for how these two teams will defend each other. Motenza trying to go for a pick and roll scenario, but doesn't get this one. But it's a good look, though. Bella's in transition, looking for options. Inside the key, no look time, finds Pogginvish. Trying to get out of the three second key to avoid a violation. Bella's high release, too strong off the backboard. The rebound's been secured by Sayadi. And Iran looking to tie the game up, maybe take the lead with a three pointer. Well, here comes the three from Sayadi. The three is up, and it's good. Well, Iran take a one-point lead, the first travel of the game. The legend, the man, the myth, the legend, currently playing for Galatasaray in Turkey. As Mandelop the nerve responds, and look how quickly they were able to get the ball on the floor. And Iran, who usually are a very organized, very strong defensive team, that time just weren't quite awake. Mosin trying to set a screen here for Sayadi, trying to make some room to get that three-pointer off. Mortezra on the baseline, rolls its way in and out. A foul is going to be called against Mosin Tamardash. He also plays for Sayadi's former team, Fenerbahce. Well, substitution coming in for the Iranians is now Amireza Amadi checking into the game, currently playing his wheelchair basketball in Spain. He's unable. Oh, look at the defensive intensity of Mendel Opten, uh, Dan Jail for the Netherlands. Even making the substitutions quite challenging. It's now the Netherlands leading by a slender one point, trying to extend on the lead. Hoggenvish inside the key, just a little too flat. Good defense by the Iranians. Trying to get numbers ahead. I mean, there's a goal baseline. Find Sayadi. 10 feet tries to use the backboard, and now Iran take the lead for the first time tonight. Well, second time, excuse me. They got the opening bucket. Just like that bronze medal game in Dubai. It was back and forth in the early stages. But Iran did prevail in the third quarter. Bellas inside the key and again rolls its way out. Iran now can have a counterattack. Well, I mean, the answer is wide open, but Saadi wants to go to that ball screen scenario. Finds Morteza. Amadeza inside the lane. Gets the M1. Count it, he'll go to the free throw line here for the potential three-point play. Iran currently changing the tide of this game. Well, the foul is going to be called, I believe, on Frank de Jong. Well, an unsuccessful conversion on the three-point play, but still a three-point lead to the Iranians.
Up to inert, finding Bellas. High release, and again, no problem off the backboard. But when he releases the ball right above his head with that long reach, I mean, it becomes near impossible. The only thing you can try to do is contain it. Cutting it down to a one-point ball game. Iran, well, I mean, that's a thought about it, but doesn't go for it. Sayani go and pick and roll, finds Amireza. Made his last one, goes up, draws another foul, so he will be going back to the free throw line. Iran finding a lot of success breaking down the Dutch defense with this pick and roll scenario. Well, so far we have a lot of people, of course. William Ruba, Team Iran, let's get this. Boris Kranitz, Team Netherlands, I would like to see it. Liam Hodgson, let's go Iran. So quite, quite split on the YouTube chat right now. Who people think are going to win? Quinton Zatanga, a.k.a. QZ, checking into the game. 17 points yesterday in that victory against Canadians. Zamiadeza misses the first free throw. Knocks down the second one. One possession lead to the Iranians. 1.51 to go here in the first quarter. Live here at the Azure Arena in the beautiful city of Antibes, France. Foul is going to be called against Amireza. Or remember, if you are just joining us for this IWBF tournament, this is the last chance for Paris. Four teams from this tournament will qualify for Paris Paralympics. Already the United States of America, Great Britain, Spain, and Australia have all qualified. Time winding down for Mendel Upton Ertz. Tough pass. Pogovic is going to have to force this one up. Mendel's got to go. Shot is up a little too short. A good defense by the Iranians. <laughs> Netherlands just taking a little bit too much time in their offense, but credit to the Iranian defense. Mortez is going to get called for the eight-second violation. He talked about taking too much time. Way too casual getting the ball up the floor. Well, that's the kind of turnovers you cannot afford to make. But now they're going to have to regroup. Well, one thing about Iran is you go to the game yesterday against France. They were trailing significantly throughout the game. They found a way back in. It's Pog and Bish inside the key. Good passing. Dion wide open, goes off the bank board. The bank is open. And we're all tied up at 16 apiece. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Good passing here. Time's almost up. Sayadi's got to make a decision what he wants to do. Final second, going to have to shoot this. Gets it off in time, but that is going to be a 20, no. Yeah, 24 second violation. Netherlands thought they came out with a possession. Quinton <laughs> Tatanga infuriated. He wanted a continuation, but the referees unfortunately did have to make that decision. 31.2 left, seven. Point two seconds difference between game and shot clock here for the Netherlands. Pogenvich going around two screens. Has time and space, finds QZ. Well, Pogenvich is getting the ball inside the key, but his natural position, he is a facilitator. He's going to have to try and shoot this one. Time is winding down. So Tanga gets it off in time, it's up. Iran come up with it, three seconds left, they're going to have to push. Sayadi throws it up from half court and it's on target, but a little too short. Well, wheelchair basketball fans were all locked in at 16 apiece in this game at the IWBF rabbit charge between the two teams who competed for a bronze medal at the World Championship in Dubai. Well, we take a look at some of the key stats so far in this game. It's a joint top scorer between Matthijs Bellas and Frank Dion. They have a combined total of 12 points. 
Well, at the moment, Sayadi leading all scorers, not only for Iran, but also entirely for the game. He has nine points. Iran have four players on the score sheet of Amadi, Amireza, and Abassi. Well, welcome to everybody who is watching this live on the YouTube chat. Welcome to Athlete, Liam Hodgson. Welcome to Charlie McIntyre as well and Rani Dagamin. Please let us know where you're watching the game in the world and which team you think will win. Here is the only three-point of the game coming from Sayadi. Well, Matthias Bell is with the high release. I mean, that is impossible. You can only hope to try and contain this man because it is a high release. Pong and Vish, this is great passing. Unselfish wheelchair basketball coming from the Dutch. And in the end, it was two points coming for Frank de Jong. Well, the Iranians did start the repechage tournament with a defeat yesterday against the French. While the Netherlands got their victory against Canadians, so if Iran wins today, both teams would go one and one. The final day will be decided to see which teams will automatically qualify for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. Well, currently the Netherlands only one turnover, nine rebounds collectively as a team as Iran will have the first possession, but the Iranians, two less rebounds, but also two more turnovers. Something they need to improve as this game progresses. Montessa well, fighting Sayadi. Nice give and go, but the pass is a little too much. Goes out of bounds, and that will be possession back to the Dutch. QZ bringing the ball up along with Robin Pogginvish in the backcourt. Cross-court pass, finding QZ. 17 points yesterday, doesn't get this one. Rebound's been secured by the Iranians. Amirez are trying to get Iran into an organized half-court set. Sayadi so going baseline. DeBoer trying to prevent him from having any mid-range looks. Mati now puts it up, gets the foul, doesn't get the M1. But he'll go to the free throw line. Well, that was on target. Rolled its way in and out of the bucket, but two free throws coming up for Iran's number 13. Well, Iran did lose to Australia in the Asia Oceana Championship which they did come and win the second place medal. And Mahdi Abassi had 12 points. He was 5 and 10 from shooting that night with eight rebounds, two rebounds, shy of a double-double. Of course, that defeat meant that the Iranians were unable to automatically qualify for the, for the Paris 2024 Paralympics. But now they have another chance. As he makes a second free throw, giving Iran a one-point lead here in the second quarter. QZ looking for an option. I mean, that's a trying to defend Mendel up to know, but they've left him wide open now, and that could be a mistake. And that's what happens when you take an eye off Superman. Well, Annie Reza played very good defense on him, but decided to leave him last minute. And if there's one player who just cannot give an invitation to take a mid-range shot, it's definitely Mendel up den Ert. We saw yesterday in the first half, the Canadians did a phenomenal job of trying to defend him. One player defends him. One player is coming ready for a double team, and three have to play cat and mouse when he decides to get the ball up. Well, four player change coming in for the Iranians. Well, 
Coming in for Iran, number 10, Mohamed Nejad. Mani Abbasi. Well, staying in the game at the moment. Amireza also, but also checking in for the Iranians. Vahid Kolamazad. Also, Abu Jalil also coming in here for the Iranians. Amireza giving this one up. Good defense. Got to force it up. The time's winding down. That's going to go out of bounds. And another turnover for the Iranians. And this is what makes the Netherlands such a dominant team here. Defensively, they are very tough to break down. Pogovic making a penetration. Mendel up there, no, trying to be physical here. The defense trying to hang in with him. Top of the key, looking for options. Amireza not giving him any time or space. Goes for a tough fadeaway. Somehow, someway, Mandelop Dinot gets the fadeaway off balance. That is much harder than it looks. Still a three-point lead for the Netherlands. Two and a half played here in the second quarter. Akeem Mansouri goes in, and that is a good look. But didn't get the right luck on the shot. The Netherlands looking for a counterattack. Pogenvich trying to get inside the key. Good passing. Frank de Jong pump fakes, goes up with it. And now, indeed, it is a five point lead to the Netherlands. Effective patient passing coming from Kaiser Wusselas players. Such a very well coached team. Trying to get into something. Well, it's not a bad look. It's a high percentage shot, but just not getting any luck at the moment. Pogovic, tough pass. Mendelov did not catches it under pressure, but he misses. Well, I think it was just as impressive that he caught a tough pass. Well, now can he run break? But they're going to turn it over. Well, they wanted to avoid getting caught for an eight-second violation, but they have to take care of the ball. They cannot afford to turn it over in the half court. Well, another change coming in for the Iranians. As Mosin Tamadash, who plays for Fenerbahce, coming back into the game. Bellas has a three, puts this one up, and that's a little too short. Ron trying to come up with a loose ball. Fresh 14 for the Dutch. Pocket fish. Looks for his options, finds Mendel, and rolls his way in and out. But here's where Ron needs to try and build something into transition. Mosin giving this one up, finds Vahid. Good passing down the lane, goes up, and another foul's been called. So Ron will be going back to the free throw line for the third trip here this evening. 5.53 to go in the second quarter. Still a five-point lead to the Netherlands. And at the moment, Iran still being led by their top scorer, Sayari, who is on the bench at the moment with nine points. While well, the Netherlands joint top scoring coming from Frank de Jong and Mendel Opton a combined total of 16 points, eight points between them at the moment. And Matthias Bellas has six. Well, Mari Abassi, as we mentioned, currently the free throw line misses them both. Well, nice pass by Mendel Opted out, finding Robin Van Pogenvich, but he's unable to secure it. Just able to regather himself. Netherlands have numbers. Mendel cross court. Finds QZ. Good defense by the Iranians. That's going to be a 24 second violation. Well, head coach of Iran, Mohamed Reza Dastiar, knows his players can build confidence on every time they're able to get a stop on defense. We saw this at the IWBF World Championship, a team that is predicated on how well they shut down teams.
Just under five and a half here in the second quarter. Mosin Vanabasi, good passing. Hakeem wide open goes in, and the bank is open yet again for the Iranians. That cuts it down to a three point bowl game. While QZ fumbles it, turns it over. Slight delay in game in the moment with 22 on the shot clock, but Iran will get it back sideline. Well, timeout's going to be called at the moment as these two teams will have a chance to talk it over. Well, again, welcome to all the wheelchair basketball fans who have tuned in to this game in the IWBF Rapid Charge. Last chance for Paris. We're live here in the beautiful city of Antibes, France, on the south coast of this beautiful country. And again, if you are watching, please hit that like button and also subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube. And make sure you follow us on all social media platforms of Instagram, X, and Facebook. If you would like a shout out, let us know where you're watching, which team you're supporting. As Coach Kais Van Husela just wants to try and draw maybe one defensive change for his team as they currently lead by slender three points. Well, the only difference in this game right now, the scoring between three players for the Netherlands much higher. And obviously having many talented players of Matthias Bellas, Mendel Obdenert, and Frank de Jong. But credit to the Iranians, five players on the score sheet at the moment. They're led by Sayadi, the Galatasaray superstar. Under halfway here in the first half. Iran still trailing by three points. Abbasi looking to get this one up. Time nearly expiring, good passing. And that's gonna be a three second violation here against Iran. Well, you could argue the point there that maybe Tamadash probably should have gone up with that one. Well, the officials now, I believe, just having a discussion possibly about the shot clock at the moment, or maybe an issue with one of the players. Not quite sure. Play looks like it's ready to resume. Pogginvish bringing the ball up here for the Dutch. Hasn't been too much of a scoring threat, but Robin van Bogenvich, he's one of the best facilitators in international wheelchair basketball. Another foul is going to be called against the Iranians. That's going to be the second team foul here in the second quarter. Well, this one's going to be called against Abdul Jalil. Mendel up to can go to double figures, but he's unable to convert this one. And now Iran with another chance to try and chip into the deficit. They've made one three-point already here in the first half. And a three-pointer would tie the game up. Vahid looking for options. Finds Abasi. Five here on the shot clock. Abasi. Vahid's got to shoot this one. Time winding down a little too short. It goes out of bounds, but it's going to remain possession to the Iranians. Fresh 14 on the shot clock. 3.53 to go here in the first half. Mosin puts it up, and Iran at the moment, they just can't buy a bucket. You can't argue, they are getting good looks, and a foul is going to be committed. By Abu Jalil.
Well, the foul was actually on Hakeem Mansouri, the captain of Iran. My apologies. Off to Nut, going for a cross court pass, finding Zatanga. QZ trying to find Pogginvish, almost turned it over. Five left, QZ, and it's going to be a fumble and another Dutch turnover. 319 left here in the second quarter. The Iranians will have a fourth consecutive chance now to try and chip into this deficit. Most on top of the key, backdoor play, finds Abbasi. He's got to stop here. He cut it down to one point ball game, but he misses right next to point blank, blank range, but he gets a put back. Now it is a one point deficit. Now we're under three minutes here. Hoggenbish has a three on three of Frank DeBoer, Patrick DeBoer. Rebound has been secured, and now the Iranians can retake the lead. Just over two and a half here in the first half. Abbasi got it by Frank De Jong. Tries a lob down low, but now they're outside the key. Needs to make a decision very quickly. Baseline, mid range, it's up. Front eye, no good. Goes out of bounds. Now, it's going to remain Iran Bull with a fresh 14 on the shot clock. Double change coming in for the Netherlands. As now Matthijs Bellas checks back into the game. We'll also subbing back in, Anil Jail. Both players were key for the Netherlands when they won the bronze medal at the European Power Championships in Rotterdam. Vahid now off balance, fading away, and again, he doesn't get it. The bank just a little off target there. Avoiding the eight second violation, Netherlands looking to extend a slender one point lead. Five left here, Bellas fading away, goes up and doesn't get the right arc. And again, Iran with another chance to try and regain the lead for the second time today. But an offensive foul called and a costly turnover for the Iranians. Well, they get close, but it's always a missed shot or some turnover that is costing Iran at the moment. Just over 90 seconds left here in the first half. Netherlands, can they regain the lead, or can they ex extend on the lead for that matter? QZ baseline, but it's a little too strong. Both teams going through a bit of a barren spell at the moment. Some form of confidence to try and inspire their offense. Mosin from 15, left wide open, goes for it. It doesn't get the lucky drop, and a foul is going to be called against Jalil. And that's going to be two free throws, yeah. So QZ will be going to the free throw line. Iran has already put the Netherlands into the penalty. Well, Jalil asking the question, he felt there wasn't any contact. He's saying to the official that QZ lost balance, but nonetheless, Quintus Atanga will take two free throws. Had a phenomenal performance yesterday in their win against Canadians. 17 points, but he misses the first free throw. Well, he was indeed the third top scorer at the European Power Championships, where he averaged just under 10 points per game. Second one's good, two-point lead for the Dutch. Mosin going all the way. Finds Vahid off the pick and roll, and now it, oh, he misses a layup, but he gets a putback potential. Second time, no good. Bellas gets a rebound now. Netherlands potentially could go two for one. Bellas down the middle, finds QZ, goes up with it. 
and gets the roll. The bank is open yet again. Two possession lead now for the Netherlands. They lead this one 25 to 21. Eight seconds difference between game and shot clock. Five seconds left. Mahin's got to make a choice. Tries to go for it off the back, and again, the bank is open for both these two teams. Netherlands, two seconds now. Opted in, it's got to force it up from half court. It's up and hits the top of the backboard. Well, what an exciting first half we've had here between two teams who battled for the bronze medal at the IWBF World Championship. And at the moment, they're playing each other in game day two of the 2024 IWBF Rapid Charge Tournament. The last chance for Paris is on. It was the Iranians who took the bronze medal in Dubai. Who is going to take the victory here today? It's just too close to call. Well, here are some of the key highlights. Sayadi, of course, leading all scorers at the moment with nine points. And as it stands, six players from Iran on the score sheet. Only four for the Netherlands, but a joint top scoring coming from Mendel Abdenerd and Frank de Jong. Combined total of 16. Well, again, phenomenal first half at the moment, but we will take a short break. So go get a drink, go get something to eat, but don't go anywhere too long. As indeed now we're trying to come back here for the second half.
have shown that they are capable of making this a very close and competitive game. Well, this is game day two of the IWPF Remichage. These two teams did play yesterday. Netherlands starting in fine fashion with a victory against Canada, while Iran, a very close nail-biting encounter against the host team, France, that did go down right to the wire. Unfortunately, the Iranians did lose by two points, but take nothing away. This team, they come here with a mission, and that is to qualify for Paris. Well, we'd like to give some shout outs to some of our fans currently watching live on YouTube. So, shout out to Hank Yang Stubtgel. As well, shout out to Dylan Cummings, Amireza, Amir Jafari. Shout out to Jonathan Pollock. And of course, to all of our other fans who have joined in live. Welcome, everybody. If you are watching live, make sure. You hit that like button, subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube, and follow us on all social media platforms of X, Instagram, and Facebook. Well, Iran currently have seven players, six players, sorry, on the score sheet, led by Sayadi, the man who plays for Galatasaray, formerly of Fenerbahce, a huge rivalry in wheelchair basketball in Turkey. While for the Dutch, four players on the score sheet, but it's joint top scoring for Frank de Jong and Superman Mendel of Den Hurt. He does have 2,000 at the moment, six points coming from Matthijs Bellas, a QZ with three points. Well, indeed, we get this one back underway. Well, the Netherlands currently with four turnovers in this game, but that's been down to both teams exhibiting good defense so far. So Tanga trying to go around the defense. Finally, Mendel up there, two players on him. Has to give this one up, finds Matthijs Bellas. Three is up, front iron, no good. Well, mid-range shot is up and beautifully tucked away. Well, Abbasi, as we mentioned, in that gold medal game against Australia, in which Iran did lose and didn't get the automatic qualification for Paris, he was phenomenal, and he's got to play big tonight. So Tangan now, what a pass coming. Sayad, he's got to try and catch up this one. Can he save it? Well, again, you can't deny the heart, the passion of Sayadi. Nine points this evening, but it was a tough pass. That could have been a spectacular play. QZ has options, finds Mendel up there, goes off the backboard. Now he becomes the first player in double digits today. Ten points for Superman. Ron trailing by two points. I mean, as a trying to lead the way here on offense. Sayani, the only player with a three point in this game. That one's just a little too short. Now the Netherlands looking to restore their lead. They lead by two at the moment. Can they go up two possessions? Mendel looking for options. Finds Matthijs Bellas. Pump fakes. Goes up with it. Well, it's just not getting the lucky drop at the moment. And that's down to the fact that Iran are playing great defense here on him. Amireza getting in and around the defense, inside the key, finds Abbasi, it's just too strong. Offensive rebound is good. And roll locked in at 27 apiece. It's just back and forth action between, remember, two teams who battle for that bronze medal in Dubai, in which Iran did leave victorious. QZ on the baseline, thinks about it. Now we're under 10 here on the shot clock. Slight hesitation by Zatanga. Tough pass. Bellas keeps it alive. Goes up. Good defense by Abbasi, but another offensive rebound here by the Dutch. This is much better defense from Iran on Mendel up den Erd. Bellas again. It's a good look, but they're just not dropping. Iran looking to retake the lead for the first time since the early stages of the second quarter.
Sayadi got it by Frank de Jong. He'll go up, he can give them the lead, but again, the backboard just not open here at the moment. Well, Mendel up down it. Swerving in and around the defense, draws a contact, so he will go to the free throw line. Ten points already for Abdin 6.43 to go here in the third quarter, all locked in at 27 apiece. Boy, you just love the tempo of this game. Both teams respectfully, very well organized, very well coached. In the case of Moran coach, Iran coached by Mohamed Dreza Dastia, the former Thailand head coach. Again, if it's one thing you have to appreciate about both these coaches, Kai Svan Wusala, the way they get their message across to their players, just such professionalism. And you can see all players on both these two teams just so eager, so determined to play for their countries. One point lead to the Netherlands. Often out, only making one of the free throws. Morteza finding Amareza. Abasi, nice passing. It's going to be a three second violation. And maybe Abasi should have thought about going for the shot. Another turnover for the Iranians. Opted out, trying to make something happen. Morteza coming over the double team. De Jong left wide open. That hits the back iron. Iran doing everything to keep the Netherlands off second chances. And now they can take the lead. I mean, as it goes in, he draws a foul. And he will go now to the free throw line. Well, Iran have had quite a few trips to the charity stripe so far today. The problem is for Iran, they're only four for nine tonight from the free throw line. Got to think, if you make all five of those free throws, you have a four-point lead nonetheless. But no problem here for Amarez and tying the game up. Makes them both. What's one of those games you don't want to look back and think the outcome could have been different had you made all your free throws. Simply get to the free throw line, knock him down. So tiny with time. Goes up and finally getting into that rhythm, maybe. Restoring the Netherlands lead. The roller coaster between these two teams does continue. Well, Ami Reza, why not? Goes for pulls the trigger. Iran has made one three-pointer today, but that came from Sayadi. Netherlands leading by one. It's a three-on-two. Didn't quite get the spacing in the transition. He had Patrick De Boer along with QZ. But in the end, Iran are going to get called for a foul. So sideline possession coming to the Dutch. Wants the bronze medalists of the European Power Championships against the silver medalists of the Asian Oceania Championship. And now, Amirez comes up with a loose ball. He can give Iran a one point lead. He slows his, takes his time, goes up with it. And now they do so. Well, he's been such a big factor here in the second half so far. What an impact he's made for the Iranians. Nine points, joint top scorer for the Iranians along with Sayadi. Satanga baseline. Finds Bendel up to Erd. Inside the key, goes up with it. And again, it's back and forth. Both teams exchanging field goals. Iran trying to push the tempo quickly. Quits is Satanga, good defense. Goes out of bounds, forcing the turnover. Ami Reza trying to say there was a reach in. Now they do have a choice. Well, no, they don't actually, in fact. It's 
So our referee Gustavo from Brazil, one of the very best in wheelchair basketball. Just explaining the rule. Cross court to Tango, baseline, looking for options. Finds the ball, goes up with it, too strong off the backboard. Iran trailer by one, can retake the lead. Abbasi trying to lead the transition. It's QZ trying to get close to Sayadi. The one player they don't want to get into any rhythm here in the second half. Morteza catches one hand, gets zone rebound, and regains the lead for Iran. What a third quarter we're having at the moment. Both teams coming out ready to play in the second half. Pogginovich has been quiet so far offensively. He's been a key facilitator. Opted up, off balance, and again, no problem for Superman. Well, they may need him to put on that orange Superman cape. Because Iran are definitely challenging them. Foul's going to be called against Mendel Optina. Top scorer in this game with 15 points. Well, the one positive thing here for the Netherlands in this game, not that they didn't play poorly yesterday, they played fantastic in the second half. There's more players getting on the score sheet right now. Five players so far. Patrick De Boer, Matthijs Bellas, Quinton Zetang, who did have 17 yesterday. He has three points at the moment. But mental up to nut, but the key thing has been Frank de Jong. Again, great job by the Iranians. Seven players in the moment. Wheelchair basketball is a team sport, and every player matters on the floor. Ami Reza, a four points here in the second half. Finds a bossy tough under pressure, goes up, can't get it. Good defense by Patrick DeBoer. Rebound secured by Mendel up to nut. Wachat in the Netherlands push from this transition. Well, a foul is going to be called against Sayadi. That's only his first personal foul. But it is the 13th foul against Iran here in the third quarter. Well, again, we'd like to welcome all of our live viewers here on the IWBF YouTube channel. Let us know which team you think will come out victorious. Remember, it's a repeat of the bronze medal game at the IWBF World Championship in which Iran did take the victory. A great job by Morteza, but try to intercept the pass, but it does go out of bounds. So tempo will be key here in the third quarter. 14 on the shot clock for the Netherlands. 2.48 to go here in the third quarter. Pogginvich thinks about it. As QZ draws a contact, tries to go off the bank, but he will go to the free throw line for two shots. QZ makes them both, extending the Netherlands lead to three points. Well, Kai Sven Husala, the head coach of the Netherlands, of course, a lot of confidence in Quinton Zatanga. The traveling violation is going to be called against Amireza. So costly turnover there for the Iranians. Well, Iran's head coach, Mohamed Adreza Dastia, currently questioning the call. Well, that's one thing I really appreciate about Coach Dastiar is that he is so focused on his players. He doesn't protest too much. But he's a very passionate wheelchair basketball coach, for sure. So tang it down the middle. One more pass. Finds off to another. And again, the bank is open for Superman. Biggest lead of the second half here for the Dutch. Five-point separation between these two teams. Iran need a response. Sayadi scored this here in the second half. Can he get it going? You bet he can. He now becomes second player in this game to go to double digits. Second top score right behind 
Mendelov did over 17 points. Netherlands trying to get their organization, trying to build the spacing. So Tanga goes baseline, finds Pogginvish. And it's just sublime passing, unselfish wheelchair basketball from the Dutch. Iran needs to make their defense a little bit more tricky inside the paint because Netherlands at the moment getting the ball anywhere and everywhere they want at the moment. Sayari trying to draw help side defenders. Well, they have wide open look there. Mohammed goes off the backboard, doesn't get it. Well, the recovery defense by Mendelov Dinner just putting him off. Well, Mohammed Nejat probably should be making that one with a down by five with just over a minute. Well, good interception by Abbasi. Now, can he push this in transition? And an unsportsmanlike foul is going to be called. Well, Iran are going to get two free throws and they will regain possession. So this is good for Iran now, chance to build. Sub coming into the game now for the Iranians. Mohsen Tamadash. I believe the unsportsmanlike foul is going to be called against Quinton Satanga. So we'll be... Iran's number 10, Mohamed Nejad, go into the free throw line. Let's have a look at the replay here. Yeah, good call. Because the tanker did come from behind, but free throw has been made. Iran doing a better job of making the free throws here in the second half so far. Makes them both. Cutting it down to a three-point ball game. Now we're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Sayadi top of the key, tries to love to a Bessie. Good catch. Under pressure, he's got to make this one. Doesn't get it. Foul has been called. It's the final team foul for the Dutch to give away here in the third quarter. So 14 on the shot clock. If Iran goes quickly here, they could get a potential two for one. But they will have to go quick. So yeah, trying to use the ball screen from Nejad. Goes for a three. He's made one. That was on target. But it will go out of bounds. The only positive from that offense is that there are seven, no, eight. 8.7. Seconds difference between game and shot clock. All Iran needs is one stop. They can get the final shot in the third quarter. Up dead earth, trying to break down the full court press. Pogging the fish, trying to penetrate. Goes baseline, looks for options. Ten here on the shot clock. Mendel give it go, goes baseline. It's going to be, well, a turnover, yeah, now. Iran can get the final shot here. We talked about it. But an offensive foul is going to be called against Morteza. So the Netherlands will get this one back with 9.1 seconds left here in the third. Now it is an offensive foul, so it will not indeed be team fouls. So no free throws coming up here for the Dutch. QZ now thinks about it, goes for it, three is up, front eye can't get it. Slight delay in game now with two tenths of a second left here in the third quarter. Iran trailing by three points, they'll get it back. Well, you have to go for the lob and then you've just literally, you gotta tip it like a volleyball player if you think about it, because it's not enough time to get set. Well, they're going to go for the long one. It's got to be a lob pass from Sayadi. He's going to try and throw this cross court. Throws a long one. Parking Vision decepts and wheelchair basketball fans. End of the third quarter. The Netherlands currently have a three-point lead against Iran. It's a repeat 
of the IWBF bronze medal game. But so far, the Netherlands, they are in control. We'll go through some of the key statistics here in this game. For the Iranians, currently too many turnovers, 13 at the moment, while only six for the Netherlands. Well, Iran does have 24 rebounds. Netherlands still out-rebounding them with 30 so far. Netherlands currently with seven offensive rebounds, one more than the Iranians. Well, the Dutch haven't made a three-pointer so far this evening. Iran one for four. That was a boxy. Some of the key highlights here from the third quarter, but it has been an exciting game of IWBF International Wheelchair Basketball between these two fantastic teams. Quintus is hanging out five points. Total of five players on the score sheet so far here for the Dutch. Well, good job so far by the Iranians. Seven players on the score sheet, two, three of them. Well, two almost near double digits, but it is indeed Sayadi, the man who plays for Fanabachi. No, excuse me. Do not want to offend any of the fans in Turkey. Place of Galatasaray, formerly played for Fanabachi. Well, we'd like to give some shout outs to our live viewers. Big shout out to the man, the legend, Dylan Cummings, huge advocate of international wheelchair basketball. Shout out to Amireza, Amir Chafari, Salam Chetori, my friend. Shout out to athlete, Jao Geronimo, Bomjia, Komosta, and shout out to Jonathan Pollock. Mohsen Alizeda, Salam Chetori, and welcome to all of our live viewers. If you'd like a shout out, let us know your name, which team you're supporting, and where are you currently watching this game in the world, but also let us know as well, who do you think will win this game? Will it be Iran or will it be the Netherlands? Well, the Iranians currently from the field shooting 14 for 40, just under 40% at 35. So far, they've done a better job from the free throw line. The Netherlands currently 17 for 46. They're just above 35% from the field. Final 10 minutes. Iran looking for their first victory. They lost yesterday against France. Netherlands looking to go 2-0 with their victory against Canada yesterday. It's all about the last chance for Paris. Another turnover, good defense, make it number 14 for the Iranians. Well, that's going to be the third foul. No, excuse me, second foul against Sayadi. Still top scorer for the Iranians so far in this game. But remember, he had nine in the first half, but only two in the third quarter. Abdenud defended heavily by Sayadi. Switching this one to Robin Pogenvish. Time winding down, QZ, top of the key, goes up with it. Cannot get it. Well, the defense exemplified to perfection in this game. Both Iran and the Netherlands making it very tough for each other in their offensive game plan. Sayani looking for space. Finds Amireza. Abasi now, one more pass. Finds Nejad. Can't go up with it, tough one. Good defense by Pogenvish. And now the Dutch trying to break. Trying to extend the three-point lead. Mendel up down falling over. So up down does fall to the ground, but it's going to be possession to the Netherlands with 14 left on the shot clock. Defended. Up to no, it's got to make a choice. So Tanga, it's got to force this one up. Goes up, gets it. Big time shot. QZ extending the Netherlands lead to five points. Well, that's a heartbreaker for the Iranians' defense because it did everything right until the dying seconds of the shot clock. Now it's Iran's turn. Few seconds left here for Sayadi. Twisting, turning, he's got to shoot this one. Has to put it up, and the shot clock, he gets it! But it's a long two-pointer. 
As he was just inside the rainbow. The Iran bench uh -huh. calling for a three-pointer, but now will the officials discuss it? No, I don't think they will. Right? They are going to discuss. Could this be upgraded to a three-pointer? That's going to be the key question. Well, to all the fans currently watching live, Liam Hodgson says still doable for Iran. I agree with you. This is a close game. You saw yesterday Iran's first game against France in front of the host, the host fan base. They managed to find a way back in the game and almost gave themselves a chance to win. Well, William Rubens made a good point. Iran need to manage the ball and get two stops, and that's absolutely correct. So they're going to review this. The officials are going to have to go to the monitor to decide if Sayadi's shot was indeed a three-pointer or a two-pointer. So players now will go to the bench. Coaches will just have a quick chance to talk to their players. Great stuff so far here from both teams. Let's have a look. Wow. Very conclusive there from that angle. It's only a two-pointer, but it's still a three-point ball game. 8.05 left here in the fourth quarter. Well, again, welcome Basel, or welcome wheelchair Basel fans to on team. This is the 2024 IWBF Rapid Charge Last Chance of Paris. Four teams will be joining the USA, Great Britain, Spain, and Australia for the 2024 Paralympics. QZ going baseline, finds the board again. Beautiful execution by the Dutch. Extending the Netherlands lead back to five points. Well, Iran need composure now. They cannot decide to fall apart. They were excellent yesterday against France. They don't want to go 0 and 2. Zami Reza may go all the way, but a foul is going to be called here against Frank de Jong. More tests are asking the referees. Hey, that should be an unsportsmanlike. That's only the first team foul against the Netherlands here in the fourth quarter. Find Sayadi inside the key. He's got to make this one. Foul's been called, so two free throws. Iran were four for four from the charity stripe in the third quarter. So Sayadi's got to make these two free throws. Two free throws coming up. Well, they almost averaged, I'd say a double, they almost averaged a triple double if you think about it. The IWBF World Championship 15 points, eight rebounds, and four assists, but two short on the first free throw. Well, he's a huge fan favorite and a legend in Turkey, where he spent the last two years playing. Makes the second one. Two possession leads still to the Netherlands. Now Iran trying to exhibit a bit of full court pressure. Optinut breaking this one down. Hoganvich hasn't looked to score a lot tonight. It was on target, but an offensive rebound by Mandel Optinut. Those are the kind of plays Iran can't afford to give up. Dion goes back door, and now it's a six-point lead. No need to panic here for Ron. Plenty of time left. But they've got to find ways to score. Good defense by Pogadvish, but it goes out of bounds. Iran will regain possession. Six fifty-one to go here in the fourth quarter. Sixteen on the shot clock for the Iranians. Oh, foul's going to be cold. But turnover, excuse me. Leron getting to make a change. Zamir Eza will check out the game. Coming back in, number 23, Mohsin Tamadash. The Fenerbahce superstar plays his wheelchair basketball in Turkey. Well, Tamadash. So far, zero points tonight. He's 0 for 3 from the field. But Coach Dastia trying to change something up, trying to find something to get his team back in the game. 
Up to it. Now it's an eight point lead to the Netherlands. Time winding down. Lead has been built. Ron now must get something. Sayadi in the key, tries to use the bank. The bank is up and it's open. Possession by possession, three possession game only. Iran needs stops. Pogovic in the key, blocks the pass, good defense. Morteza comes up with it. Abbasi in transition, Iran do have numbers, but they have to get ahead. Mosin, finds Sayadi, pump fakes. Back to Abbasi in the key, goes up with it. Now it's been cut in half. Back to a two possession ball game. Satanga so put under pressure, but he finds Poganovic. Netherlands trying to hold on, trying to go 2 0 here at the IWBF Rapid Charge. Up to Ert, makes a bit of contact, goes in, doesn't get it. Abbasi with a rebound. Sayadi under pressure, needs a bit of help. They turn it over. Well, they needed somebody to try and break down the full court pressure. And here comes Poganovic, finds off Den Ert. DeBoer inside the key, goes up, off the bank, and Netherlands restore a six-point lead. Halfway to go here in the fourth and final quarter. Well, this is the challenge Iran need to overcome. Sayari trying to find an opening here inside the key. Pump fakes in around the defense, doesn't get it. Mortez gets the rebound. Put back no good now. Mendel opted in. Uh, tipped that one out of bounds. So Iran will get it back with a fresh 14 on the shot clock. What well, is indeed going to be a baseline ball. Nash will inbound this one. Finds Abbasi, made his last one, makes another one. Keeping Iran emotionally and mentally in this game. Well, if you are a neutral wheelchair basketball fan, you definitely want to see this game go right down to the wire. Gives you that nostalgia of the IWBF World Championship bronze medal game. No foul colds. Opted out, mid-range, puts it up, and again, count it! Superman, he's put on that orange cape. Well, Bossy down the middle. Nowhere to go now. Find Sayadi. Sayadi going baseline. Goes for a tough contested one. Reverse layup is, and again, B-E-A, beautiful follow-up. Well, who wouldn't want Mosa Tabadash on their team? That's what I like to call a fanger roll. And again, it was off the bank. Opt-in hurt. Swerving around the defense. Just over three and a half, trying to keep the Netherlands in front, trying to go 2-0. and oh. Cross court, finds the ball. Dion goes up, can't get it. Satanga, well, didn't hit the rim. I think it was going to be a protest of a potential 24-second violation, maybe. But now Iran can make this a one-possession ball game. Sayari left wide open. It's going to be again too short. Didn't quite get the power behind it. Pogovic, cross court, finds Mendel. Obdenet's going to finish this once. Back to a six-point ball game. And you've got to love the Dutch transition, how quickly they move the ball on the floor. Sayadi trying to use the screen. Again, Tamadash goes up, too short, just couldn't get it. And a foul's going to be committed by the Iranians. The reaching foul's called. And if it's on Sayadi, that will be a third person. I'm not quite sure if it was him. Well, I'm not sure if a foul has been called, actually.
think it was a delay in game. Obviously, Sayari unfortunately did fall to the ground, but Iran needs stops on defense. They don't want this deficit to keep on getting bigger. They went down by eight once here in the fourth quarter. They got it back to four points. So they need stop after stop while the Netherlands just need patience. No need to rush this game. They have the momentum right now. Pog and Vish in the backcourt. Well, he's been scoreless so far tonight, but he's been the ultimate facilitator for the Netherlands. Ah, oh, it's going to be a Dutch turnover. A very uncharacteristic mistake by the Netherlands. It's very unusual to see them make those kind of passes, those kind of turnovers. But they still have the lead by six. Abasi inside the key. He's got to make this one off the back. Oh, it rolls its way in and out. That is unlucky. And a jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow going in favor of the Netherlands, so it will be their ball. Well, the possession arrow will change, so now it will go in favor of Iran for the next jump ball, that is, because we are in the final quarter. Netherlands have four seconds to get the ball over the court. They just avoid the eight-second violation. Up to Ertz. 23 points tonight, 34 yesterday. But the victory will mean more to him. QZ caught the double team, and a foul is going to be called. And that's going to be the second team foul against the Iranians here in the fourth quarter. So far, Morteza, the only player to be concerned about in foul trouble. He has three fouls. Olabasi. And Sayadi both have two each, along with Amadi as well. But that's not too much concern for the Iranians. Getting a stop on defense. Pogadvish. Time, space. Finds the young. QZ is going to have to shoot this one. Doesn't get the roll on it. Iran get the rebounds. Can the Iranians muster something from this? Trailing by six, but time is winding down. 90 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Tamadash has to take it. Takes his time, puts it up, gets it. Nothing but net string music. Coming from Mosin, Tamadash. Well, the ball is left wide open, but a foul is going to be committed. That's not a bad foul, actually, because it's only the third team foul for the Iranians. And what it does do, it slows down a potential transition bucket from the Netherlands. Think about it now. 1.16 left. Potentially, it's four possessions. Iran need two stops. And they need two offensive possessions to either tie the game or we'll take the lead. So you got to think a bucket now here for the Netherlands would be quite a tough task to take a baseline. That could be it. QZ on the baseline. Big time shot. Restoring the six-point lead. Iran's probably got to think about a three-pointer now. Sayani trying to get it inside the defense from the free throw line. Goes up. Can't get it. Gets a follow-up, goes up, but he doesn't get the AM one. Well, that would have been crucial if he converted that one. And his last trip to the free throw line, he was one for two. 42.5 left. Make them both. You cut it down to four points. He's been great today. 16 today for Sayadi. The Fenerbahce superstar. Used to playing in the Oka Sports Arena in front of thousands of fans. Makes the first free throw. Well, he was phenomenal, of course, at the IWBF World Championship. 15 points, 8 rebounds per game, along with 4 assists. Tried to go off the backboard. Well, up to none. Is it going to be a turnover? No. It's going to take a deflection. Now, the Netherlands have 2 seconds to get the ball over the half court. Trying to send everybody along. Iran's got to switch everything on defense. 
Well, they get it inbound to Patrick DeBoer, no problem. Sayadi commits a foul. Now, Kai Sven Rusela on his bench are asking the question. The referee's going to talk it over. Was this a deliberation? Will the referees go to the monitor? Yes, it's been called. The unsportsmanlike foul. So two free throws coming up for the Netherlands. And they will get the ball back with 34.4 seconds left. They lead by five points. So Tanger at the free throw line. He can't go to double digits if he makes one of them. There he has it. Third Dutch player to get into double figures. But he's unlucky on the second one. Six point lead to the Netherlands. The timeout's going to be called by Coach Dasiar of Iran. Well, he's got to come up with a quick stop. Down by six. You got to go for a three pointer, surely. But we'll find out. Well, Basel fans, if you are watching live, this is the IWBF Wheelchair Basel Rapid Charge Tournament, the last chance of Paris. Four teams will be joining the USA, Great Britain, Spain, and of course, Australia. Well, if you are watching live on the YouTube stream, please hit that like button. Also, if you can, please subscribe to the IWBF on YouTube and make sure you follow the IWBF on all social media platforms of Instagram, X, and Facebook. Well, the problem now for Coach Dastyar of Iran and his players, they don't have the ball right now with 34 point left. They gotta get a stop. 14 seconds on the shot clock, 34 left in the game. And when they come up with the ball, they've gotta go quick offensively. Gotta go for a three pointer. Then you gotta get another stop. Well, the Netherlands, they've been great for the free throw line, so they surely have to anticipate a foul could be coming. But if you're Iran right now, you don't want a foul. Give up the 14 seconds, get it back with 20 left, go for a quick three, and take a gamble. Don't send the Netherlands to the free throw line quite yet. Well, they've gone for it. They've gone for the foul. Interesting decision there by Sayadi. Well, the Netherlands so far this evening, they've gone to the free throw line. 10 attempts, they've made seven of them. It's Pog and Bish, makes the eighth out of 11. <laughs> makes them both. Now it's an eight point lead, another timeout coming. And you gotta think now, Iran probably will need a miracle. Down by eight, 33.1 left. It's gonna be a tough task. Well, it's been a great action between these two teams so far, but in the fourth quarter, what the Netherlands did a very good job of was just holding on to a slender lead of four points, sometimes eight. Iran did a good job of making comebacks, but the Dutch have prevailed. But no doubt right now, Coach Jastia is drawing up an offense. They've got to go for a three-pointer. And even if they get it, it only cuts it down to a five-point ball game. Then you've got to go for a stop. If you don't get the stop, you got a foul. So everything has got to be clinical right now for the Iranians. While for the Netherlands, the experience, they must be composed. Well, the Iranians are going to advance the ball, which will take the shot clock down to 14. And this might be a good idea, because if they get it inbound right away and get a high percentage open look, they should go for a three-pointer. Everything must be clinical. Time is not on their side. Ball's going to be inbound. Finding Morteza. Not a lot of time left. It has to go quickly. Morteza getting it around the defense. Finds Nejad. It's going to lay this one up, but he misses the offensive follow-up. And it's good. Six-point ball game. 20.3 left. Iran still battling with everything they have. Mandelop Denud gets it inbound. 
Finds the ball, goes up. Quick response there from the Netherlands. 15.3 left. Iran tried to put on the full court pressure. Cross court pass, finds Sayadi. Well, it's been a great game between these two. Sayadi goes for a Hail Mary three, can't get it. Rebound's been secured. Wheelchair Basel fans, what a game. The rematch of the bronze medal matchup between both Iran and the Netherlands. But the Netherlands, they'll take the victory 61 to 53. Well, they will go 2 0 here at the IWBF Repechage. Last chance of Paris. Four teams. We'll be joining the USA, Great Britain, Spain, and Australia. And as it stands, the Dutch, they go 2-0. Iran, they fall to 0-2. We'll find out the four teams who will be going to the finals for the Paris 2024 Paralympics on the final day. But big, big victory now for the Dutch. Great performance as always from the usuals. 23 points from Mendel Optina, 10 from Frank de Jong. Three players in double digits. Patrick DeVore, he had eight points. Matthijs Bell is six. Collective effort, wheelchair basketball. It is a team game. Both these two teams, respectfully, they've exemplified the true definition of team wheelchair basketball. Great respect, homage being paid by both teams, players and coaches. They've been there before together. They've battled in Dubai. Iran took the bronze. But tonight, the Netherlands will take the victory. Big, big performance from the Iranians. Well, you got to think in that fourth quarter, if the Iranians found a way to tie the game up somehow, this could have been a closer game. But now they're going to have to bounce back. The adversity, the challenge, getting tougher for them. But there's still time left. Coach Daftia knows his players, they've given everything. Matthijs Bell is here from just outside the paints. Using the bank, the bank is open, the bank is orange, and the bank is Dutch today. Well, again, we'd like to give a big shout out to all the fans watching live here on the IWBF YouTube. Big shout out to Boris Krenitz, the man, the legend, Dylan Cummings, who is live here, and to Jonathan Pollock. Sinclair Thomas, thank you for joining us as well. As well as Amireza, Amija Fadi. And to all the fans who tuned in for this unbelievable game. 2-0 for the Netherlands. Some key highlights, Abassi, some phenomenal shooting from him this evening. 11 points, he finished with two players from the Netherlands, from Iran, getting into double digits. Sayadi, second top scorer in the game, top scorer for the Iranians. He had 17. Boris Credits, MVP, loving this game as usual. What a game it was. So Tanga probably having the final bucket that did seal the game here for the Netherlands. Six points from QZ. Well, 10 points from Zatanga. And of course, great performance from both these two teams. Patrick DeBoer putting on a phenomenal display inside the paints. And nonetheless, just a great game of wheelchair basketball here at the IWBF Repicharge. Well, that was the key thing Iran were doing a great job getting inside the paint, getting key buckets. And again, Abassi. The paint was his domain, but it just wasn't enough to get the victory over the Netherlands. Slayati with the tough shot. The follow-up. Look at this. No look. Larry Bird-esque finger roll coming from Tamadash. And the cross-court pass. Who needs Batman when you've got Robin Pogadovich fighting Superman? As Mendel up to nerd getting the layup. It's all over. 2-0 for the Netherlands. More games to come here in the IWBF Rapid Charge. Again, if you are watching live, please hit that like button, subscribe to us. As we have two big games coming later today. We're live here in Anti France. Et ça sera au combien important de, de, de voir ce match en euh, ville, puisque le Maroc et la Thaïs sont le plus opposé à l'équipe de France. Ce sont donc euh, des adversaires euh, potentiels de l'équipe de France lors des matchs au euh, de la vie. 
Effectivement, ça va être un dating italien et colombien. Voilà. Donc là, je suis à de très près leur performance, leur manière de jouer. Effectivement, lundi, on connaîtra les euh, adversaires aux Français. On rencontre au pour, euh, vous l'avez dit à plusieurs reprises, euh, ce dernier euh, ticket, les quatre derniers tickets pour commencer voilà, 8 équipes, seulement 4 places euh, pour euh, les Jeux Paralympiques et on espère de tout faire en face de pour l'instant pour que la France euh, y aille. Hein. Et pour l'instant, les adversaires potentiels en cette euh, deuxième journée de l'équipe de France euh, lundi sont euh, le Maroc et la Colombie, l'Allemagne euh, et euh, l'Italie qui ont déjà remporté respectivement un et deux matchs. Donc euh, ce match va être impératif et on verra une vraie tendance euh, se distinguer. Allez, dans quelques secondes, l'entrée des équipes. Mesdames et Messieurs, les 17 et 20, dans quelques instants, le troisième match de la journée opposant le Maroc à l'Allemagne. Nous le disions, un match beaucoup plus important puisque le Maroc pourrait être sur le chemin de l'équipe de France pour le dernier jour de compétition de ce endroit, la chance pour Paris. Mais les regards vers le cube pour la vidéo de l'enfant de ce match. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, please welcome the Colombo team. Mesdames et messieurs, merci d'accueillir l'équipe du Maroc.